Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to be looking at 2D single point tracks and four point tracks to make a corner pin in Natron. Natron is only a 2D software so there's no 3D camera solver whatsoever so it's just the 2D tracks. Let's get started. So we're going to start by making a tracker node with the tab menu by tabbing and typing tracker. This is it here. So these are the main tracking options we have available to us. Most of the time I just end up leaving these as default, um, but they are worth uh, having a read through and paying attention to what's there. You could maybe think that this is a useful option where you can change the translation to also track rotation and scale. Uh, but if I need rotation and scale, I tend to use a corner pin more often than not anyway, which we'll get into in this video. So for the purposes of this, I'm just gonna leave these as default and it will work just fine. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna start by making a new track. So this will make us a track over here, which will put it by default in the center of frame. And we want to start by tracking this marker down here. So I'm going to drag the track over to it by clicking the middle dot of the tracker. And so I want to make this inside box cover the contrasty shape that we're going to be tracking. So I want to start by finding a good frame that we can see the point on. In this shot, it's any frame will work just fine. Uh, and so I'm going to make the marker fit inside the center box. So the center box represents the image that Natron or the tracker is going to try and find in the adjacent frames. The outside box is how far the tracker will go to look for that image. So there's not a whole lot of motion in this uh, shot, so we don't need to make it too big. The bigger the outside box, the slower the track will be, and the smaller the faster. Let's say this marker moves a lot from one frame to another, say it moves over here, this track will fail because it's not looking far enough to find it. So, but for this shot, this will be just fine. To track, we have to use these um, tracker specific play buttons that it's added up here. These buttons show up by the tracker node being open in the properties panel. So if I close this, they'll go away. Same with the, the viewer handles over here. So I can get them back by just opening the tracker node here and these have all come back. So now I can start by tracking one frame forward and you can see that it is making an animation path uh, following the tracking point that we are after. So it looks like it's working. I can also just play it through instead of doing it one frame at a time. And then I can scrub around and check that my track point is staying on top of the marker, which it is. So now just going back to the frame we made the track on and tracking backwards. Now we have the full frame range of our shot tracked on this point. So cool. So now what do we do with this? We want to make uh, a transform node that will follow this point so that we can apply things and have it stick to this point. So to do that, with making sure the track is enabled, which it will be by default, by this being ticked here, we can go over to the transform tab. So motion type is what we want to set to match move. There are other options in here, like stabilize is a very handy solution, which will just keep this tracker in the same place and uh, the rest of the shot will move or be stabilized around it so you can work on a stabilized image and then apply the match move afterwards. It can be a really useful um, trick. But for now, we're just going to make a match move and we're going to stick something to this marker. So the default type of transform is corner pin, which for a single point track, uh, it's not really necessary. It will work, but uh, we want to make this a transform. So this will make a single point transform node. And we want to set the reference frame to uh, something. The idea of a reference frame is that will be the frame that the transform values are set to zero, so essentially no change in position, and then the frames around them um, will be moving relative to the track relative to your reference frame. So if we set frame, let's go frame nine because it's a frame that we'll probably do some paint on later. So if we set this to the reference frame, the tracking, the translate data is set to zero, and then either side of that it moves and then it goes back to zero at frame nine and then does the same thing in the other direction. So on frame nine or any frame, it doesn't really matter, we can export this track here. And let's turn link off so that it makes a standalone node. If I have link on, it will, it'll use an expression to link these values here from the tracker node to the transform node. With link off, it won't do that. So here we have made a free transform node that has our transform data in it. So if I go to a frame like 30, this value and this value will be the same. Cool. So what we can do with this just to demonstrate that it's working is I can make a color wheel and um, 
just scale it way down and move it around about to the position. I'm just going to merge this over. I'll have a proper episode on the merge node um, so we can understand that properly. Um, but for now, it just is putting this image here over the top of this one here, just like that. There's no tracking data in this transform node, it's just for positioning purposes. So I can put this color wheel dot over the tracker and now I'll apply it. This is our, our track here, which is the one with the animated transform value. So if I can apply this to the color wheel, see how it's moving between this frame and this frame. That's because we're not on the reference frame. So if I go to frame nine, there'll be no movement let me make this a little more clear here. There'll be no movement between this node and the match move. But over here, there will be a difference between this and this. So on our reference frame, we want to move. Just make sure it's in the right place. Cool. And so now if I, so what I've done now is I've just put the color wheel over the top, applied the match move, and I'm merging it over. So if I play this through, this should stick to the marker, which it seems to be doing. And one thing you'll also want to do, it seems there's a little bit of a bounce in there, right there. And that looks like just between there and there, the track has either failed or a keyframe hasn't made its way into the translation data. So if we go over to the curve editor, we should be able to find, yes, yeah, see these, see these two values, these two keyframes here and here have the exact same value. And in a jittery shot, this won't work, but for this shot, if I just delete these keyframes, it'll smooth out that motion there and it will fix it. So that's just something to check. I'm just going to turn these back on and just check in the tracker node if they, yeah, it just seems like the track failed on that frame. So we could correct it in the tracker node. by just going to one of the frames. Ah, so it seems there's no keyframe here. So if I go to this frame where there is a keyframe and I just track it forward. There we go. So now that we fixed that little broken frame, we want to regenerate the transform match move node. So we're just going to delete this one here, go back to the tracker, make sure it's all still looking good, hit export. So if we want to do away with the process of having to delete and recreate the match move node, we could hit link. And then when we export this here and put it in, if we make any changes to the track, they're also going to apply straight away into the transform node here. So these values are linked directly to these values here via an expression, which is what the green line is representing. So now if we look at this with our fix applied and we play this through, you can see that bumped frame is no longer there. One other thing you'd probably want to do um, to make a match move look really good is just turn on motion blur. By default, the value is zero and a value of one means that motion blur is on essentially. So now that will just apply the motion blur to the um, to the tracked image and it will just sit in a little bit better. So that's an example of a single point track and match move. Just really quickly, I'll go over the stabilize option. So if we make a stabilize, it's applied this directly to this transform because it's linked. So anything, I, any changes I make here will apply to this node. So if I look at this node here, that's now a stabilize, let's remove this for simplicity's sake. So looking at the, the stabilize here, this marker will stay in the center of frame or it will stay in the same place in frame, should I say. It's also a good way to just visualize how good the track is. So you can see it bouncing around um, in motion blur a little bit. I just put the mouse there. It's sticking pretty well. Okay, so now we're gonna look at a corner pin with a four point track. So if I look at the tracker node now, um, it's got the stabilized motion baked in. That's because if I open this up and I go transform, uh, the motion type is set to stabilize. 
The tracker nodes can actually act as a transform node themselves as well as generating a separate node. I always generate a separate node just for the sake of tidiness, um, but if, as you can see I'm looking at the tracker now and the, this is the motion of the marker but the marker isn't following it, it's actually got the stabilize applied. So if I just turn this to none, now we've got the original motion and the marker is following the track. So that might be a little gotcha um, just to keep in mind. So we're going to go back over to the tracking tab and we're going to stop this and we're going to zoom out and we're going to try and make a rough rectangle with our points. So these two markers are going to be the bottom one and then we're going to go up and we're going to find a nice contrast area, maybe Winston Churchill's face and one of the letters in Richard Dawkins over here. So if we zoom up, uh, zoom in over here, open our tracker node, we're going to make another um, track point. It doesn't matter which frame um, your tracking points start on, they'll all be reconciled by this value here of the reference frame which will set them essentially to zero in the tracking stage. So we're going to zoom in, we're going to do the exact same thing we did before, just make this encompass Winston's face because it's a nice little contrasty area here. Scale that up, zoom out a little bit, track forward, go to it back to the frame we started on, track backwards, scrub through, check it's all working, it looks like it is. We could do, we could uh, disable the original track and just having track two enabled, which is this one here, I select it, you can see that. I can go over and I can select stabilize and looking at the tracker down here, I can just play this down and close this and we can see very clearly how well the track is doing. If I just put my mouse over his nose, you can see it's sticking really, really well. So we know this is a successful second track. We're just going to repeat the process um, two more times. So the tracking tab, create a new track, move it over to the R and Richard, scale it up. There we go, zoom out, track forward, track back, disable the, the previous one, set it to stabilize, looking at the track node down here, play it through, put the mouse over where we tracked, it's sticking really well. So this kind of warping it's doing is the is the motion blur and the different perspective and size that it becomes in frame, but if we hold, hold over the middle it's staying perfectly in frame. Cool, one more time. Open the tracker, create a new one, move it down. If you're using a pen like me um, and it doesn't always understand when you lift it up, sometimes, I think the other day I accidentally inverted this box, so these little things in here were pointing inwards and the track will completely fail if it does this because essentially it's not looking anywhere, it's inside out, so you just got to make sure that that these little bits are pointing outwards and they're the tell that the, the track is in the right way so to speak. And we're going to track this forward, track it back, disable the previous track so we know we're just looking at this one here, and play it through, close this, put the mouse in the middle, and it's perfect. So now we have four tracks, we're going to enable them all and we're going to use these to create a corner pin. So over in the transform tab we're going to change the motion type to match move. We're going to try and change the transform type back to corner pin. So this will open up our corner pin options here. So these values here are the corners of frame. So the top two and the bottom two here and these points here are where the tracks are and they're the from. So it's going from here um, to over here relatively speaking to the reference frame. So the reference frame won't have any motion whatsoever, uh, won't have any change whatsoever and then the rest will based on the tracks. So if I, I'm going to turn link on, I'm going to go export and now we have a corner pin. So the way to check this is working, we could do the um, stabilize and check the plate method but I'm going to do a different one. So on our reference frame where there is no change, just looking at the plate, I'm going to close the tracker for now I'm going to draw a roto shape around these books because these books are what we were essentially tracking. I'm going to hit space to go full screen so I can um, see this very clearly. And I'm just going to draw a rough roto shape around 
the books like this. If you're following along with this um, exact footage, go ahead and make this shape as well because we will be using it later in the subsequent lessons to make the final comp that I showed in the beginning. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, which the shape is far from it. And there we go. So it's just a rough outline of the shape and I'm just going to put this roto shape over the image in a way we can visualize it. So I'm going to use a grade node, plug the source into the plate and the mask into the roto. Looking at the grade node, make sure un, un and premold is disabled. We're going to open this up to the four values which splits out the color channels. There'll be another episode on that as well. I'm just going to make green a value of two, which just puts a green grade over the, the roto shape just so we can see it there. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug the corner pin into the rotor shape because at the moment this rotor shape is just still and it won't the plate will move underneath it but it won't stick so if i plug the corner pin into the rotor shape and the mask from the grade into the corner pin now so i've applied the corner pin to the mask we just created looking at the grade node and playing this through we can see that the rotor shape has essentially been applied to the track and it now matches the image Obviously, it's not perfect with perspective. It's only tracked at the, the depth that we did the corner pin at, so these um, won't stick perfectly, but you can go in and fix the rotor shape um, to work with those. We don't have to for the sake of this video, but you can see now that the corner pin is working. And don't forget to turn on motion blur if you need it. For the sake of a rotor shape like this, we don't really need it. Um, and having it off will be faster. Having it on will be more accurate, but a little bit slower. So that's the basic of single point tracking for a transform match move or stabilize and a four point track for a corner pin in Natron. If you're following along with this series, keep that corner pin handy because we'll be using it later on and um, stick around for the next episode where I'll be explaining color channels and pre-multiplication. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and see you later.